Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So this is gonna be really exciting. I'm really looking forward to this. This is something that I have been thinking about doing for quite some time, even before I owned an F80. Uh, but we're actually going to be tuning my M3. Now, for me personally, if you guys know me, if you've been following my videos and kind of my journey with my cars, you guys know that I'm not a huge number hunter. I'm not somebody that goes out searching for a specific number. I'm not gonna do certain modifications to reach a certain goal. That's just not who I am. For me, I like to keep it reliable, safe, and just kind of improve what's already there. You know, go to the next step, I guess, without going too crazy. I don't like pushing the limits of anything and kind of risking the integrity of the car. Now, just for reference, my car is a 2018 F80 competition. So on paper, 444 horsepower from the factory. Obviously, German engineering, they always kind of underrate their cars. It may be a little bit less, it'll be a little bit more or so, but 444 is what they claim this car to be. And to be completely honest, the stock 444 is plenty for the streets. It's enough to you know keep you out of trouble, but at the same time, if you want to get in trouble, you most certainly can. You can definitely get your rear tire spinning, no problem, first and second gear, especially in a manual transmission. But what I want to do before we start getting into actually flashing the car is I actually want to go over a couple of reasons as to why I chose the certain brand and flash and tunes that I went with. There's basically two different options that most people go with. So I wanted to go over the reasons as to why I chose what I chose and why I picked one over the other. Obviously by the title of the video, you guys know what I went with. I personally went with boot mode. Now besides boot mode, there's another brand that a lot of people like and enjoy and they go with, and that is MHD. But I decided against going with MHD for a couple of reasons, three to be exact. So what I wanna do is go over those three exact reasons as to why I chose boot mode over MHD. Now, before we get into it, I just wanna say, I don't think you can go wrong with either boot mode or MHD. They're both fantastic platforms. They're both very, very user-friendly. This is not a discussion to say which one's better or not. This is just what I personally choose and kind of in my research, these are the three reasons as to why I decided to go with boot mode over MHD. The first reason is MHD's customer service. Not to say their customer service isn't great, but they're actually overseas. So them being overseas, you're not gonna be able to get a response right away. So say if you had an issue flashing your car, you know, you bricked your DME, you're in a parking lot, you know, what do you do? You know, maybe it's two o'clock in the afternoon thinking, you know, hey, they'll reach back out to me, I'll be able to get this fixed up and on my way in no time. I don't know how many hours ahead they are, but you know, it's nighttime over there. They're most likely sleeping. You're not gonna get an answer until the following day. So being in a situation like that is very stressful. You know, these cars for most people are their daily drivers. So being left stranded like that, it didn't sit well with me. No, not to say their customer service isn't good. Being in the same time zone, being in the same country and being able to answer your questions that you may have, you know, if you're in dire need of an answer or some help, boot mode would be able to answer that super quickly where MHD wouldn't be able to. Number two is that MHD are not the tuners. MHD is just the program designers. They're the engineers of the actual platform, the app. They're the ones that make it possible to be able to flash it to your car. However, MHD actually outsources their tuners, their actual maps. So they actually have tuners that they've actually selected from what I have gathered to be able to use their tunes and load onto their platform. BootMod, on the other hand, is Pro Tuning Freaks. Pro Tuning Freaks is boot mode, so they're one and the same. So if you ran an MHD tune and you ever had a question, they would basically be the middleman. They would basically have to reach out to the tuners, get the answer, and then get back to you. Whereas boot mode is Pro Tuning Freaks, so if you had a specific question about a specific you know, parameter or, or setting on one of the maps, they'd be able to answer right away. Now for me, that just didn't sit well. I'd rather have the tuner and the platform be one and the same so they can truly answer intelligently and give me you know, the answers that I need and also be able to help me out. I wouldn't be waiting for 15 different people to get an answer. So having that all in one platform just made me feel better in going with boot mod over MHD. And the last reason that I didn't go with MHD is because their tunes are actually a little bit more aggressive than boot mode. If you guys heard me in the beginning of the video, you guys know that I am not a number hunter. I am not somebody that reaches for certain power. I'm not somebody to you know, push the platform to the absolute extreme to get everything I possibly can get out of certain motors. That is just not me. I live within reason. I'm not somebody that can afford to spend 20 plus thousand dollars on an engine or a rebuild or anything like that. So I'm not somebody to push the limits. I want something reliable, I want something safe, and I want something that I can enjoy for miles and miles and years to come. 
I don't want to push the boost levels. I don't want to go crazy and just make it, you know, the fastest thing in the world and then have issues in the long run. So I'd rather be a little bit more on the conservative side and go with boot mode over MHD. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go over the materials and things that you actually need to actually flash your car. So we have over here the couple things that you will need to flash your car properly. First thing, you're obviously gonna need a boot mode license. So you can reach out to pretty much anywhere that sells the licensing, you can search on Google, you can search your favorite shop, most likely they'll be able to sell it to you. Then once you have that license, you can load it into boot mode after you connect your car and you'll be good to go. Second thing you're actually gonna need is some type of device to flash to your car. Now, the thing that I loved about boot mode was that there's so many different ways to be able to do this. I know a lot of companies only prefer one specific type of device, but with boot mode, they pretty much offer anything. So you can use a Windows computer, you can use a Apple, you can use an iPhone, you can use an Android, you can use anything that you want, which I absolutely love. I'm a big Apple user, I use an iPhone, and I have a MacBook. So it's just one of those things, I didn't have to go searching for a Windows-based laptop, I can use what I have. So you're gonna need some type of device, whether it's your phone, or computer to be able to flash the actual tunes onto your car. Second thing you're gonna need is a cable of some sort. Now, there's two ways of going about this. You can either use this, which is an actual hardline cable, OBD2 to an ethernet, or you can use the Wi-Fi adapters. I know a lot of people have success with both, but for me personally, I prefer the hard wire just because I do not trust the Wi-Fi adapters. Having a wireless connection and it possibly, you know, the signal may fail or may drop scares the crap out of me. So going with an actual cable, yes, it's a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more, um, you know, things that you have to store. You can't just throw this in your glove box as easy as, you know, the Wi-Fi adapter, but I'd much rather have something like this that I know is 100% safe and it's not gonna fail me, as opposed to the Wi-Fi adapter. Now, you can use either or. I know tons of people use the Wi-Fi adapters, no problem, but basically the Wi-Fi adapter is just this part. It's just a little module that you plug into the OBD2 and then you connect it through Wi-Fi. I personally prefer the cable because of that reason, so this is what I'm using. Now the third thing that you're actually gonna need, this depends on which device you're actually using. For me, I like to have the option to use both. This one is an ethernet to a C port cable, which goes into my MacBook. And then this one right here is an ethernet to a lightning cable, which can go to my phone. These just connect directly to the uh, OBD2 wire right here. It clips right in there, or you can do this one, clips right in there. So I have the option to be able to use my phone or my laptop wherever I am. Now for this video and for the first flash that I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be using this one, which is for my laptop. This is a pretty decent one. I've used this for Bimmer code as well to be able to code a few things in and it's worked really, really well. I've also used this as well for Bimmer code with my phone, works very, very well. Now for the wires and everything, I'm gonna leave a link below for all of this stuff. So if you're interested in picking up any of these, all you gotta do is click the links below and you can pick them up. This is the preferred and recommended OBD2 wire that all tuning companies basically are saying to use. So I definitely recommend picking this one up. It's legit. But again, there will be links below for all this stuff. Last thing that I recommend, it's not needed in order to flash, but I highly recommend it. You need some type of battery tender or charger. And the reason is because you wanna make sure that your battery is not gonna die on you because you're using the car in accessory mode. And if your battery dies while it's flashing, that is no good. You're gonna brick your DME and be SOL. So, highly recommend using some type of battery charger or tender. This is the one I have. This is the Noco Genius 10. This thing is fantastic. I've used it all through winter. It's been amazing. It's good for lithium batteries, which this has. And uh, I believe it's under 100 bucks. I'm gonna leave a link below for this one as well. So if you wanna pick this up and get all of this stuff, you can pick it up. But highly recommend getting a battery charger while you're doing this. All right, so now that we went over everything, we went over everything that you actually need. Let's go ahead, hop in the car, start going over the process and get this car flashed. All right, so I got the OBD2 connected into the computer right here, got boot mod up. Uh, before we get started, you obviously have to put your license in and everything, get that all set. But I've already done that just for the sake of the video. So once it's connected, you'll see this actually turn green. So what we gotta do is click start. So up on the top here, we're gonna click the three dots or the three lines, then we're gonna click maps. And now you're gonna see two different tabs here. One's gonna say My Maps and one's gonna say OTS Maps. OTS means off the shelf maps. Uh, and My Maps are the ones that you've saved and loaded onto here. But for the sake of the video, um, you're gonna go here 
look for the stage that you want. For me personally, I went with the stage two and then I, I selected my fuel grade. So I selected 93. And then when you're done, all you gotta do is click the little download icon right here. And then once that's done, you can go over to my maps. So now we can go here and do a little bit of a customization. So we can click on the map and then this little uh, wheel up here, click there. And here we can start changing all the different values and adjustments that we wanna do. So let's go through them and um, decide together what we're gonna do. So first one is exhaust burble or exhaust burble type. So here you can actually change the type of burble that you want. You can turn them off, you can do original, you do off the shelf, the ones that are programmed with the actual tune, GTS, CZP, non-CZP, custom, you can change it. If you go here, uh, you can actually change the duration and everything, pretty cool. Uh, for the sake of this video and just to make it easy as possible, I'm just gonna click off the shelf um, and then we'll go from there. I'll probably adjust them down because I'm not a big fan of the burbles. I don't mind them too much, but when they're over the top, it's a little too obnoxious. So the next option here is the GTS startup roar. This one's really cool. Uh, if, on the M4 GTS, when you start the car, it actually revs a little bit higher on the startup and it kind of creates a more dramatic and more fun startup cold start. So we're gonna turn that on. So you can do on, original, OEM, or off. I'm gonna turn that on. So we're gonna select on. Go back, we're gonna to go to max cooling mode. Now here, I'm actually gonna turn this on. Uh, choosing on enables max cooling mode. This feature reduces the targeted cool temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, thereby causing the water pump thermostat to open earlier, as well as the fan to come on. This feature does not add additional load to the cooling system in the car when cooling or coolant temperatures are below targeted. So basically you're just getting a little bit ex extra uh, cooling. So we're gonna turn that on. Uh, rev match. I'm gonna leave all of it on. I actually like the rev match. I'm gonna leave it um, on. <laughs> I'm a big fan of rev matching on my own, but I've gotten so used to uh, this on the M3 that when I don't have it on, it feels weird. So I'm gonna turn it all on for now. And uh, I can obviously adjust later on as well. So let's turn them all on. And then we'll go back here. So the next option here is the catalytic heating, the cold start. You can turn this on or off. So if you're running Catalyst, you can turn it off so it doesn't have that obnoxious cold start roar when you first start. Uh, personally, I like it. So I'm gonna keep OEM even though I don't have cats. And plus I've heard when you turn this off with the GTS startup roar, it kind of acts a little funky. So I'm just gonna leave that on and I really don't mind the obnoxious startup uh, roar. So I'm gonna leave that on. Uh, engine RPM cold start. I'm just going to keep that OEM. Go back. Let's see. Ignition coils. I'm going to leave that OEM. I didn't change my ignition coils. I'm using the OEM ones. Let's see. EW, uh, external wastegate disable. No, I didn't change that. I'm going to leave that OEM. TPMS sensor. Uh, OEM didn't change that as well. So no need to mess with that. Um, TPS, TMAP sensor, intake manifolds. Again, nothing changed. Gonna leave that OEM. Let's see. Exhaust flap sport mode. I have the uh, flaps deleted, but I'm just gonna click open. So they're always open. Um, speed limiter VMAX. So I'm gonna turn off the speed limiter. So I have no limiter on the car anymore. I can go as fast as I want, which I will never touch because I don't drive fast. <laughs> Uh, Cadillac, Cadillac monitors, the cell. So this is actually what we turned off since I do not have cats currently. So I'm gonna turn that off so I won't get a check engine light. Now it will not read as ready. If you go get your car inspected, it just turns off the uh, light on the uh, dash so you don't have to deal with the light and everything else still functions properly. So if you do have a check engine light, it'll still pop on and you'll know something is wrong. So make sure you turn that off if you do not run cats. HPFP, this is the fuel pump. I didn't change that, so I'm gonna leave that OEM. Now we go to uh, DI and fuel injectors, same thing. I'm gonna choose OEM for that. Not changing that up. Uh, let's see, fuel control, OEM. Let's see, uh, next one is the anti-lag customization. Don't think I'm gonna do anything here. Yeah, I'm not gonna even bother with that. Throttle response sensitivity. I'm gonna see here, I'm gonna keep that off. I'm not gonna change. 
Yeah, so I'm not going to change any uh, throttle response. I'm just going to leave it as is. Max boost limiter. Um, let's see. Off will not apply any custom max boost limiter, so I'm not going to mess with the boost. I'm going to leave whatever the map is targeted at. Uh, torque by gear, percentage reduction. Uh, I'm not going to change everything, so I'm going to leave that off. And then, yeah, that's it. All right, so now that I'm done here, made all my changes, I'm going to go back and it saved everything I just did. So it said updated, uh, detected, download to update. All right, so we got everything set. Now if we go into here and we just make sure everything is good, all my settings are saved. We're good there. So now we can go to this little um, little button down there and we can hit flash. Now, if you have your phone in the car, make sure you turn it on uh, airplane mode so it does not connect to CarPlay or anything. You don't want anything getting screwed up. So now all we gotta do is click flash. Now it says, in order to flash this map, please download the stock tune first. So we're gonna do that. Uh, a couple other things I wanna mention, keep your driver door closed, your fans off. Uh, actually, you wanna turn off your lights as well. You don't want anything on. You also wanna plug in or clip in your driver's side seatbelt. And then we're going to flash and it's going to say DMA software requires an unlock outside of BM3 before tuning. If you'd like to proceed and the flash fails, click on the stock tune and choose the flash and relock DMM option uh, to restore the DME back to factory tuning. So we can confirm. It says ignore all future warnings about DMM unlock from this vehicle. Yes. Battery charger is highly recommended. Turn headlights and fan off. Connect driver's side seatbelt and do not open and close doors while flashing. If using a piggy tail, piggyback device, make sure it's off or in map zero. So I got my seatbelt in, everything is off. So let's go ahead and flash. So there we go, everything is going. You're gonna start getting some random things on the screen and things turning on and clicking. Just you know, wait for everything to be done. And then uh, I'll catch back up with you guys in a little bit. All right, so we have been spending the last hour or so trying to get this thing flashed, and uh, it's been a little frustrating, but I have some solutions and I figured out as to why it keeps failing at 2%. So the first reason that I came up with or that I've researched and I found was that the AK Motion data display that I have in the vent, the little gauge, um, it's tapped into the canvas system. So first I was thinking, okay, that's interrupting the signal. A lot of people were saying that that possibly could be the case, but I actually talked to Alex from AK Motion and he said, all you gotta do is lock the screen. There's a little um, kind of button you click uh, on the screen and it puts it into lock mode so nobody can mess with it. So after that, you're able to use the OBD2 and you can flash or use the OBD2, no problem. So that wasn't the issue. I did that, it still failed at 2%. I really started scratching my head and I was like, what is going on? So then somebody reached out to me and was like, hey, what does your dashboard say when you plug in your car in boot mode? What, you know, what's the actual DME say? So I honestly didn't know where to look, but they pointed me in the right direction. And then I found this. Up on the screen, you guys can see my actually DME information. And as you can tell, it says bench. So what that actually means is that my DME is locked. I really started scratching my head saying, why is my car locked? when this is a 2018 and BMW uh, started locking the DMEs, I believe in 2020 or even 2019. So I was really, really confused as to why mine may be that cause. So I got a little frustrated. I spent some time away from the car, but uh, I'm gonna reach out to my shop and figure out what we're actually gonna do or what we can do to see how we can get this car flashed. All right, guys, so you guys are probably wondering why we're driving in the car and uh, how come I didn't show you the completed tune while it was processing. Well, <laughs> after a lot of trial and error, I realized that my DME is locked. And the reason that I have come up with and that I've researched and kind of figured out is two reasons. One, a previous owner went to BMW, got a software update, and uh, BMW locked it. A lot of people were saying that that could be the case because, you know, if you ever bring the car back and there's ever, um, you know, update or anything like that, BMW, they're kind of told to lock the DMEs so you can't tune the car. You know, it happens, not the end of the world. Another reason is 
that I've heard uh, any build in 2018 from July on, BMW was locking the DME from the factory. Mine is an August 2018 build, so that could be another reason as well. Again, not the end of the world, but just an obstacle we have to overcome. So I'm actually headed up to Auto Couture Motoring. Um, I actually had to head up here anyway to get my alignment done and um, get the tie rod replaced. They've already ordered the tie rod last time I was there when I was doing the crank hub, and um, I've already paid for the alignment, so they gotta throw that on. Figured might as well get the DME unlocked while I'm up there. So we're gonna head up there, get everything knocked out, and we should be good to go to flash the stage two. Again, just an obstacle, but that's the part of modifying cars. Sometimes you run into things like this, and you just gotta overcome them and just move on and enjoy it. So that is what we're doing. All right guys, so we are back home and as you just saw in the last clip, we were able to finally flash stage two 93 boot mode onto the car. So we ended up going to Auto Couture Motoring. We got the DME unlocked. They basically had to remove the DME and bench unlock it. A little tedious just because you gotta remove a few things. It's actually underneath the intake manifold to get to the DME, pull it out of the car, and then you gotta do your magic on the computer and get it unlocked. One thing I wanna note is that after you get your DME unlocked, bench unlocked, and then you go in and plug boot mode, back into your car, it will still say benched in that same spot. I was a little confused. Uh, I actually didn't flash it at first. I reached out to Proteining Freaks, boot mode, and uh, I had to wait about half an hour or so. They got back to me, they're like, hey, it's always gonna say bench, just go ahead and flash it and you should be good to go. So I went with their advice, I went ahead and flashed it, and sure enough, it got past that 2% and it went all the way to 100% and it flashed successfully. So as you can see, we're in the garage, the car is absolutely filthy, kind of hard to tell on camera, but let's go in the back here. You can really tell here. Yeah, pretty dirty, dirtiest this car has ever been. And the reason for that is because on the way home, I hit some pretty bad rainstorms. So I really wasn't able to get on the car too much. Although it did dry up at some point, so I was playing around with a little bit. I'm going to be doing a full separate uh, kind of impression first experience video. Now, obviously I really haven't gotten on the car too hard. I did play around with it a little bit before it really started coming down. And this thing, I gotta say, is an absolute rocket. I am like unbelievably surprised and shocked how fast this car is. I was honestly not expecting such a big jump just from a tune. Obviously I have the downpipes and everything and the inventory intake, and we'll go over the things that I have to kind of come up with the number that I did come up with, but it is unreal how fast this car is just from a tune. Now keep in mind, this is just an off the shelf tune. Eventually I'm probably gonna go with a dyno tune or a custom e-tune. I know there's a lot of people that recommend a few um, kind of tuners out there. So we'll see what we go to. But for now, I'm just trying the off the shelf and I am completely, completely shocked. It is phenomenal. I cannot believe how fast this car is. I mean, it's a quick car to begin with, but after we got everything done and flashed the stage two, it is insane. Before we get onto the numbers and kind of breaking things down and kind of wrapping up the video, uh, I also got the tie rod replaced, got a new alignment, which is great because I was scrubbing on this side a little bit because um, the toe was facing out. So I was having some scrubbing on the inner uh, fender tab right there. But now that the toe is back in spec, we are good. So I got the new alignment and everything, fresh new tie rod, we are good to go. So again, huge shout out to Auto Couture Motoring. They actually got me in very, very quickly. Um, it was last weekend when I was having the issues flashing and then I reached out to Matt at Auto Couture and I was like, hey, what's going on? You know, is, can you fit me in at any point? And they were able to get me in a couple days later. So huge shout out to Auto Couture once again for not only the service, but also um, getting me in so quickly. So thank you once again. If you guys are in the tri-state area or willing to travel, highly, 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 highly recommend Auto Couture. Fantastic, honestly, one of the best shops I have ever been to, not just with BMWs, but just in general, amazing. They actually had a brand new GT3 RS sitting there wrapped in its blanket that comes from the factory. 
they were doing PPF and a detail on and everything. I'll throw a picture up uh, real quick for you guys so you can see it. It was sitting in their detail shop, but incredible. It was black. <laughs> you couldn't really see it in the picture, but so let's get on to the actual numbers. You guys saw the title of the video and you saw the thumbnail and you were like, wow, 600 horsepower. So let me do a little bit of math for you guys so you can figure out just how I came to that number and then it makes a little bit more sense. So the stock 2018 competition F80, F82, M3, M4 comes with 444 horsepower. And German engineering or German cars, they always underrate their cars. So usually it's actually a little bit more than what they actually say. But for the sake of this video, 444 stock. Torque is 406. So with boot mod, stage two, 93 performance tune, they claim 24% gain with horsepower and 26% torque. So 24% horsepower, we're looking at another 1065 horsepower and with torque, it's another 105.5 foot pounds of torque. Now I actually have a few other mods on the car that actually help with the horsepower as well. The Eventuri intake, that is why it's so expensive. It's not just because it looks pretty, but it actually provides gains, proven gains with dyno results and everything. It's claimed that it gives you anywhere from about 18 to 20 horsepower and then around 23 or so torque. Downpipes, it can be anywhere from like 10 to 30, depending on the setup and everything. I'm just gonna say 10. And as well as torque, we're looking at around 10 as well. Maybe a little bit higher or so, but I'm just gonna say 10 for the sake of the video. And then also we got one other thing here that's not on the car. We actually got a charge cooler. So this is the Mishimoto charge cooler. I actually got color matched in mineral gray metallic. So it's gonna be a very, very beautiful setup. Really looking forward to getting this on. I also got the R Motorsports J pipe as well. So we're gonna be pairing that together. But the Mishimoto charge cooler is claimed to add another 11 horsepower and eight foot pounds of torque. So all in all, adding that together with everything, um, we are looking at 591 horsepower and 552 foot pounds of torque. Now again, with the downpipe, it's probably a little bit more. So let's just say 600, we're close to it. 600 sounds better. <laughs> I do plan on getting the car dynoed at some point just to kind of see where it actually sits. It may be a little bit less to be completely honest. It's good, probably gonna be a Mustang dyno. But at the end of the day, it is a huge, huge gain for not that much money. 600 horsepower, F80 M3 manual. I absolutely love this car. This is absolutely insane. I am so thrilled with where this car is currently and where we're going with it. We got so much more to do with this, but I'm having an absolute blast. Again, I'm gonna be doing a full video, full review, initial impression. We're gonna get in the car, go for a drive and everything. I'm gonna let you you know, hear the car, how it sounds and everything. Honestly, I was trying to get some driving impressions and driving clips in this video, but I really just didn't have time. As you can tell, the car is absolutely filthy, but I did wash my wife's car and the truck and I didn't get to do this one and I wanna drive it this week. So um, yeah, I just really haven't had the time, unfortunately. I didn't wanna kind of rush the uh, review or the impression aspect of this video because it's really, really important because it is an absolute riot. And I wanted to make sure I can dedicate an entire video to that because this thing is just absolutely mental. So that is gonna do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it wasn't super exciting seeing, you know, shots outside the car and driving and everything, but I promise you, We'll be doing plenty of that very, very, very soon. I'm hoping to get some driving clips this week so I can get a driving video for you guys of boot mode uh, stage two and just kind of everything that we have done in the last few weeks to get this car to where it is right now. But man, oh man, I absolutely love it. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I know this video is a little long, but I wanted to kind of go through the whole process, explain everything. And if anybody was in a similar situation as myself, you guys know exactly what to do. And now I can help you guys and kind of guide you through it on what to do and how to get to this point as well. But really looking forward to getting this thing on. I'm gonna be doing a video on that, going to be installing it myself and uh, showing you the process of that. But as for this one, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. In the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.